you think that if a ship exploded, nearly its whole crew died in what has to be one of the most horrific ways that a human being can, and caused a catastrophic environmental disaster that it would be something remembered, or at least widely known about, simply because of the gravity of it all, right? Well, in this case it wasn't, and this is one that occurred not too long ago either. In 1979, the crude oil carrier MT Independenta collided with a freighter in Turkey and exploded. Nearly her entire crew died. She burned for weeks. The ocean floor was buried under a heavy oil residue that sank, and the sea and air for miles in all directions was heavily polluted from the smoke and the spill. This is the story of what befell in the MT Independenta disaster and how it happened, what happened, and the fire, pollution, and death that it left in its wake. The MT Independenta, or the Independence, was a Romanian crude oil carrier. She was completed in 1978. She was 928 feet long, 150 feet wide, her depth was 72 feet, and her tonnage was 164,004 tons dead weight. She was the biggest ship in her country's commercial fleet at the time of her completion, though she was not the largest ship to ever sail of that particular kind. That honor still goes to the more than 1,500 foot long self-propelled super tanker Nock Nevis. However, Independenta was still a large beast. You couldn't miss her sailing past. After her completion and launch, her initial service was by the book and routine, and not much is recorded by it. It was all mundane which is what you want when you have a ship, especially one that carries the kind of things the Independent had did. You don't want incidents. However, things would not stay by the book, and what is known most about her is her loss, and it's one of few that I've covered that there is footage of, and it's haunting footage. Unfortunately, due to copyright restrictions, I cannot actually show the footage, but you can find it on YouTube. It is haunting, horrifying, and honestly looks like something you'd see in a montage at the start of an apocalypse movie or something similar. What you see here, though, is the result of the Greek cargo ship MV Evriali accidentally colliding with the Independence, which was carrying at the time 94,000 tons of crude oil. Independenta dropped her anchor four nautical miles from the southern entrance of the Istanbul Strait, also known as the Bosphorus Strait, which is a significant waterway for international trade in Istanbul, Turkey that connects to the Black Sea. Independenta was waiting for a pilot to come in and guide her in on what would be her 19th pass through the strait. It was a pass she never made. On the morning of November 15, 1979, the Evriali, which was transporting over 7,000 tons of steel from Ukraine, collided with the Independenta, striking her between tanks numbers 3 and 4. It was caused by a navigation error or simple miscommunication, perhaps. Truly, it, to this day, is not exactly clear why it happened. The Greek ship was supposed to take a turn 260 degrees right, but instead she went 160 to the left. This horrific image on screen is the aftermath. seen different sources cite different times within that hour, and 43 of the 46 of Independenta's crew were killed in the explosion. Their burned bodies were recovered after they washed ashore, all absolutely just scorched almost beyond recognition. The other three survived. Those who were killed that didn't die in the initial explosion died when the water surfaced, where they were swimming erupted into flames from the spilling oil flowing out of the tanker like blood. The three who survived only did so because they jumped off the ship away from the wind, against the wind basically, and they were picked up in the water by boats. Meanwhile behind them, the fire and smoke was being carried towards the shore. In the explosion itself, it was so loud that local citizens flew into a panic. Houses had their windows smashed in. Buildings as far as six kilometers away were damaged. And as the people looked out, they saw the eerie orange glow coming from the strait. 
as the tanker burned. Honestly, it just sounds like a nightmare scene. Again, like something you'd only see in the movie. The description of this apocalyptic scene, honestly, is just making me think of something like the atomic breath scene from Godzilla Minus One. The explosion was caused by sparks as a result of damage from the collision. The explosion occurred three minutes after the collision. I can only imagine how the crew were responding to the collision when all of a sudden their ship just exploded. A second explosion followed the first a few minutes later. A third explosion occurred roughly 10 minutes after the collision. 30,000 tons of oil burned, and the rest, some 64,000 tons, flowed into the sea. The Turkish Navy immediately responded and attempted to extinguish the fire, but it proved too intense and they had to abandon the attempt. The Navy withdrew on November 19th after another agency took over the spill operation. The strait was closed for weeks. The fire burned for 27 days, and it was a disaster on the environment. There was a thick black layer of oil on the sea from the spill. Crude oil and other residue that wasn't burned away sank to the sea floor across a 5.5 kilometer area, and up to 96% of sea animals living on the ocean floor in the area are estimated to have died. And oil coated the shoreline for miles, including on recreational beaches that were forced to be closed. Additional explosions also struck the tanker on November 18th and on December 6th, and she continued to burn until December 14th. So what else happened because of all this? Well, obviously there was a legal investigation into the cause, though, as I mentioned, a surefire answer to the exact cause for this disaster is not clear to this day. Some sources I read concluded that the Greek vessel that struck the tanker was to blame, but also some also argued that it went down the other way and that the Independenta struck the Greek tanker. Though the exact cause does remain unknown, some theories suggest it could have been anything from an accident to even a deliberate insurance fraud case that resulted in the incident. Not going to get conspiratorial, but I just thought all were worth mentioning. The captain of the Greek ship that hit the Independenta, however, was, along with seven crew, charged with negligence and being careless as well as disobeying international maritime regulations and putting the security of Istanbul at risk. The captain was sentenced to 20 months in prison, however, was released in respect to the seven he served during the trial. The International Tanker Owners Pollution Federation Limited also responded to the spill several times in the first nine months after the incident, helping to determine the extent of the spill and contamination and provide support for the cleanup and response. It was found that most of the oil was thankfully burned up in the fire and only places with major contamination were the shorelines and some areas of the seafloor. The wreck of the Independenta was left at the site of the accident for years until she was broken up and salvaged in 1983 after a ferry struck it. In 2000, one of Independenta's sister ships lost power in the same strait that her sister exploded but... There was no damage, thankfully, as a result of this later incident, and not another environmental catastrophe like this one at all. Another of the four sisters, though, sunk in 1982, and the theory is that she struck a World War II-era mine, though the wreck today shows no signs of fault in the construction on that ship itself. And of the five sister ships, only one is still in service to this day, the one that lost power in 2000, actually. The others were either sunk, never completed, or broken up. That's all there really is to say about this incident. This horrific incident that I'm honestly shocked I'd never heard of before. This feels like something you'd hear more about, but even a lot of the sources I read had some conflicting information on the time the collision occurred, the extent uh, of the spill, the impact on the environment, uh, how much oil burned. like. It was hard to get a crystal clear picture of this because, well, it seems like there isn't a crystal clear picture of all of it. And I bet some of the true impacts of it will only be known in the years to come. This though, it just feels like something you know more about. And it just feels like another one of the incidents I'm surprised there's not a movie about, especially nowadays with concern of our impact on the environment, you know, that we have. You know, it could be one that really sticks with people if it was done well, like Deepwater Horizon did. You know, Deepwater Horizon is not a movie I've rewatched several times, but it stuck with me after I saw it. And I feel like this story could have the same impact if people knew about it. 
that the story has fallen into obscurity, though. At least in the US, it might be known more over in Turkey, but over here, I'd never heard of it, and I actually only found this story while looking for another, even more obscure incident I wanted to talk about that actually did get a movie made about it, and it was one that involved a fertilizer ship that exploded. I couldn't track that one down, I'm, I'm gonna try again in the future, but... I, I'm happy I stumbled across this story. I think it was absolutely worth talking about, and I... You know, tell me, had you ever heard of it before? Anyways, also, what do you think of this incident? And what do you think was the cause, if there was only one, or if there were several factors that came together in just the worst way it could have? And who do you think was truly at fault, if anyone? Tell me in the comments, and tell me what you think of this story. This last segment here has kind of just been an off-scripted rant, but I just had a lot I wanted to just discuss with this story and just my thoughts on it all. I'm not going to do like a whole dedicated my thoughts section like I did with the Arctic video, but yeah, this was something that I definitely think should be talked about, and I hope that you agree and took something from this story. So tell me in a comment all your thoughts. I look forward to chatting with some of you, and until the next video, have a good one, everyone, and thank you for watching.